we are talking about infrastructure and logistics. We have 25 or about 40 minutes left to understand infrastructure and logistics within the battery collective context. A lot of folks have shared a lot about sharing resources for communities to have backup, how to be proactive, not reactive. I think it's really important to think about how we create that connective tissue between our community throughout the year all the time so we're not just reacting when the emergency comes. I want to highlight in chat, Eliza in Ohio said, less concerned with prioritizing emergency and much more concerned with getting my fellow community members used to systems that we can use from just for fun to basic normal to drastic outages. So how can we do that? We'll share from our experience at the Battery Collective in the Bay Area of California and hope that what we're sharing will be helpful for your learning and your planning for your community. One thing I really want to just remind all of us, because we're thinking a lot about emergency preparedness, we also want to think about what real solution we can create, because the fact is emergency breeds desperation and desperation breeds false solution. So we're not here to build brief false solutions here. We're here to try to figure out how we can build that connective tissue within our community so we can actually start to practice the community power that we have been talking about and create this alternative solution, alternative way out of the extraction that we've been seeing. So the way we're gonna do this is we're going to do some storytelling and imagine we're sitting around in a circle around a bonfire. And so it'll be really helpful if we can turn on the camera, you can be eating with us. And so we're just going to be sharing stories together and we'll pause to see if you have any questions. We're gonna share five stages of stories is how we're gonna be spending our time. So if you don't mind turning your camera on, that would be really helpful for all of us to just feel the sense of community as we share stories, share learning from how we do it at the Battery Collective. And while as we're slowly turning our camera, I'll just ground ourselves just back in session two, we did a little simulation exercise where we wanted to just imagine there has just been a some sort of disaster that after getting in touch with your community, you realize that there are two groups without power and in need of batteries, and you just happen to have a community shared battery. We put you in small breakout rooms to talk with your community that you're sharing batteries with to figure out how to deliver the battery. We came up with different ideas on brainstorming for pathways to get there. And for today, we're going to share with you how we do it at the Battery Collective. And But then we're not going to share with you like the final answer because this is an emerging process. We're always learning. And so we're going to share with you different things that we tried. One way to, so to share how we've done it, I will start by saying that it's important to look at the logistics in two ways. One, of course, within the prompt is how do we get the batteries to the two groups of people who need power. And so for us, we learned that having an active network of people communicating with each other really makes it very easy to mobilize the muscles to move the battery. You can find the battery, find the mover to move the battery and coordinate timing and things like that a lot easier. So having that connected tissue was really important for us. And then of course, how do they even find us when people have their power out? How do they find us? We realized the a second lesson that we learned is focus on putting your words out to the community instead of getting into the deep ends of the theoretical things and decision-making process and stuff like that, that for us, we fell into. So with that said, I'm seeing more faces. Thank you all so much. Hi, friends. We're going to jump into a little storytelling time between Kansas and I. We're just going to share different stages of what we tried in a somewhat chronological order. And then we'll pause after each of the stages and then see if you have any questions or thoughts and comments or observation, and then we'll go on to the next stage. So I'll start once upon a time that was in September, 2020. It was September 18th and September 23rd, right after the big orange day in the Northern California area where 
the Oregon fire has caused a lot of wildfire smoke all the way up in the top level of the atmosphere. Our air was not as bad where we can still see pretty far out, but the sky was not orange, red. And it felt like we're on Mars. And so that was also still, we're still six months into the COVID period. People are still isolated. We're still in lockdown and people are still trying to figure out how we can help each other out. The idea for an emergency community backup power supply came about. And so we just, because people power and, and a few of our members have been actively thinking about how can we create real solutions, we just, we thought maybe we should just put a call out to the community and say, if anyone's interested in ch- try to work on community backup power supply, and we put out a community call on September 18 and 23, September 23rd to try to see what stick and who wants to be part of it. About 50 people showed up. And for us, we learned that we don't want to get people excited and there's nothing. So within our members, we were able to put together three prototype batteries that was just built out by a couple members, which then allowed us to have a clear starting point. And it's important for us to start with something that you can feel in your hands or point to. So then that was like a really good starting point for us to get started with the vision of trying to create a a connective tissue muscle for us to actually be ready to help each other out. Now, at this point, power shutoff was not happening as regularly as it was in 2019 and 2018. But we thought, man, this orange day and the wildfire, it's it's very likely it's going to happen. So let's get prepared. So what we tried was we decided, man, we're, it's probably going to be widespread power shut off. So we wanted to design something that addressed the immediate energy needs of others that we can collectively control using these practices. And we came a lot of back and forth ideas and trials and tribulation, but a lot of times they're also very inspirational and powerful. One thing I want to highlight, and I want to share with you our experience so that you can be prepared too when you have these conversations with your community, is that people were very thoughtful. When we're really thinking at this call, we're thinking like, this is a solution, this is an idea, what do you think? And let's like break into logistics team, governance team, technical team. People were really obsessed with this idea of designing an app. Mind you, we're also in the Silicon Valley area, so there's a lot of app people. Designing an app with GPS on the batteries that you can use your phone and locate it. Kind of Uber, you can find out where your Uber is or like these scooters that you see littered all around your city that you can find out where they are, how much batteries left. People came up with these ideas like, oh, we want to like try to do something like that. People were concerned about internet because of power outage. So people were like, oh, maybe we shouldn't use internet, rely on Wi-Fi. So we should really be using texting or something that people were thinking about. And then they were concerned about cell towers coming down and need to consider ham radios. So these are a lot of these thinking and hypothetical things that people were really thinking about. And we ended up spending a lot of time talking about ham radios. We ended up spending a lot of time talking about CERDs. We spent a lot of time talking about disaster preparedness and we were not able to focus on the battery collective. So a key takeaway for, from that experience from us is really, let's just focus on the battery so then we actually get something going. We can get these prototype battery moving. For us, it's really important to really understand that we need to start trying rather than debating for a better solution. Like we went from app idea to, oh, app is not going to work because it relies on Wi-Fi. We're going to do texting. Oh, texting is going to work because cell phones are going to come down and went to ham radio, we literally just keep going in circles and weren't really getting anywhere. And there were also conversations about things that we can do. So questions around, is this a logistical want or is this a logistical needs? We're we're confusing these things a lot and we ended up letting the battery just sit there and do nothing. And so it was, we did not really have the time to go out and talk to communities about this idea because we're all trying to figure out how to get the logistics, all the back end blueprint ready. And we had to, and one big thing that I really want to encourage you all because this is emergency, 
it's really easy to get into emergency preparedness conversation. And if you want to have an emergency preparedness conversation, please do. These are important conversations. But if you want to have a battery collective set up, make sure you focus your conversation with your community on battery collective. Because if you let the emergency preparedness conversation steep in, it's going to be a completely different conversation, which is an important conversation. That was one big lesson that we learned in the first several months of us coming together. Um, I'll pause here and see if there are any questions, thoughts, observations before I, I pass it over to Kansas, the next chapter. Could you have created the battery, like have the, the agenda, we're gonna do the battery. And, and it seemed like you did that up front so you met that uh, objective. And then when the conversation is about how to spread the word, in Detroit, we'll simply put a sign on a wall in a, in a gas station or a telephone pole. This is the address. So if you have a, a need, we're real low tech in Detroit. We're not Silicon Valley. A lot of people barely know how to use a cell phone. I just put that forward because that was the first thing I thought was I would have shut that down real quick and said, let's just put up a sign and see who, who shows up and what they need and planned out having the other conversation after the emergency was over. That's yeah, so true. So true. For us, because we're a lot of speculation, because you don't know when the next disaster is going to come. And we had series of wildfire power shut off and then it was right after the orange day so people were ready for the end of the world to happen people were ready for fire to burn down the entire east bay area like people were i'm not exaggerating people were ready for that so we were thinking like man we only have three batteries we're not going to re be ready for everyone so maybe we need to get all of these perfect things set up and we got stuck in the cycle and we the battery just sits there and then what ended up happening was, thankfully, there was no disaster for many months. 